اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم Introduction to SCM. In this session, we are going to look into the basic concepts and that revolve around structural equation modeling. What is structural equation modeling? Now, structural equation modeling is fundamentally built around the idea of modeling or drawing a model and that represents a relationship between variables. This model will use symbols to represent variables, a relationship between variables and even error in your model. Now, SCM begins with a theory where researcher intends to test the relationship among constructs of interest in the study. The relationships are modeled into theoretical framework represented by schematic diagram. Now, the schematic diagram presents the hypothesis of interest that needs to be tested. The constructs of interest involved are measured using a set of items in the question and this is what we saw in the last session as well. Now we did describe this concept of structural equation modeling in the last session. I'm just going to give a quick overview of it. The measurement scale should be interval or ratio. Now is SCM causal modeling? And this is a very important question that is often asked even during defense phase as well. You will often hear SCM referred to as causal modeling approach. SCM does not determine causation between two variables. This is a contradiction that is used quite often with SCM. As stated earlier, SCM uses covariance metrics. CBSCM actually uses covariance metrics as its input. So you are essentially looking at correlations between variables to determine how one influences the other, but it is not for determining causation. Just because two things are highly correlated, that does not mean one causes another. SCM is a great technique to determine how variables influence one another. But to determine causation, you will need to use an experimental design. While the majority of SCM research has been performed with non-experimental data, SCM is more than capable of analyzing experimental data as well. Now, variables versus construct. Now, through, throughout this series of videos, the viewers will find the term variable and construct used interchangeably. Now, a variable is meant for directly measured scores such as age, exam score, height, income, variables such as that. While the construct is meant for indirectly measured scores such as job satisfaction, perceived usefulness, loyalty, servant leadership, culture, variables like that. In fact, the construct is hypothetical concept of something or the respondent's perception concerning a certain issue. A construct is measured through a set of items in a questionnaire. Now, what is the concept of latent constructs in a research? In science and social science researches, most of the times the researchers are dealing with latent constructs. As has been said earlier and as we viewed earlier through our questionnaire that these constructs are measured using set of items in a questionnaire. So you've got a questionnaire. Let's say we had organizational learning eight items. So organizational learning is your latent construct that is measured using eight items. Now, since the ordinary least squares OLS procedures could not entertain latent constructs because you take mean value of those items and then run OLS regression, the researchers need to employ SCM for the analysis. Using SCM, the researcher could model the relationship among these constructs together with their respective items. In the model, analyze the model simultaneously. So you have your items, then you have got your latent construct and you analyze them together. In this case, at least two measurement models are involved. One is for independent and one is for dependent. The theorized link between the measurement model for independent construct and measurement model for dependent construct is called structural model. So when one variable is influencing the other variable, that is your structural model. Whereas measurement model is to assess the reliability and validity of the constructs along with the model fit. Thus, instead of modeling OLS regression analyze and analyze using ANOVA, the researchers use structural equation modeling and then we use softwares like SmartPLS or AMOS.
Now, what is the minimum sample size required for SCM? Now, there are endless debates on it as to what should be your sample size. However, there is no clear cut answer as with each research, these things do differ because you have got different population characteristics and the constructs in a study. Now, here at all in 2010 offered the following suggestions. So, you've got five or less construct. Each construct has more than three measuring items. You need 100 sample. Seven or less latent construct. Each construct has more than three items. You need 150. Seven or less latent construct. Some constructs have less than three items. You need 300 sample. More than seven latent constructs. Some construct have less than three items. You need 500 samples. So this is the guideline provided by here at all in 2010. Now measurement versus structural model. The measurement model in SCM is where the researcher goes to assess the validity of the indicators of each construct. After showing the validity of the measurement model, the researcher can proceed to structural model. So here is your measurement model, whether these items are representing the under underlying construct well or not. So you do it for each of your latent construct and then you assess the impact of one construct on the other. Now this is your structural model. The structural model is concerned with the influence and significance between constructs. The term full structural model means the measurement and structural relationship of the constructs are included in the model testing. Now by full structural model we mean that you've got items then latent constructs and latent constructs are interrelated with each other in terms of A influencing B or maybe B influencing C. Now parameters, the term parameter indicates the size and nature of relationship between the two objects in the model. Parameter can be fixed to a constant or can be estimated freely from the data. A parameter estimate will take place on the measurement model with no indicators and error terms as well as on structure level between constructs. So here the parameter is how much is the influence of A on B. So you will have a parameter here from latent construct to your items as well. And in CBSCM, we've got error terms that are influencing these indicators as well. So you will have parameters on all of them. Now, here are a few references that you can look into if you want to know more about SCM. One more thing that I would like to discuss here. Now, here is your latent variable. These are the items. And these are the error terms. Now we are going to go into greater detail as to how to model your relationships in Smart PLS using CBSCM. Thank you very much.